Preneas 11.2 Beta 3 is available as of September 10th, 2018. We updated our test box to the Beta 3, and let's talk about that. Once again, they've been doing a lot of improvements and things like that. We're going to jump into it, but there's a couple little things that maybe you noticed if you've uh, loaded this or if you're looking at the known issues, and they plan to fix this before RC1, so when it gets into release candidate, uh, they, this should be resolved. But it is not possible to mirror the boot devices uh, not really affecting us because is this a beta machine for us and just testing um, and doing our usual fault tolerance testing where we randomly unplug it, plug it back in. And we haven't had any problems with it, but we don't have dual boot devices set up because, well, it's a beta machine. It's not for production. Uh, and you shouldn't run beta for production in general and can then complain about it. I will throw that out there. Uh, there's a couple plugins that were removed, available available listings as they are still working in progress. So apparently I've never used these ones, Tiny Tiny RSS, uh, 7, NBZD, ZoneMinder. If you're not familiar with the ZoneMinder project, because a few people have asked me about it, ZoneMinder is an interesting open source, and the only one I'm aware of, a full-featured open source data surveillance software. I am kind of mixed on it. I played with it a couple times, and I was like, okay, it needs a lot of work. Uh, it's It has a ways to go last time I tested it. Uh, that's I'm not going to digress too much in there, but apparently uh, they are removed for now from the plugins. They have tested the other plugins, and they're tested working. And if you remember with the Beta 2, there was a big problem with the I.O. cage, which they've moved away from or Warden to I.O. cage for the jails. And if you loaded something in I.O. cage and you rebooted, it may not come back up when rebooting. I have Sync Thing loaded, and I have Plex loaded, and both of them are working fine. I've forcibly just unplugged and rebooted this thing several times, and they've come up every time and had no issues at all. So that made me really happy. Those are generally the two plugins I run when I'm using uh, FreeNAS, but they allegedly all the other ones work very well. So let's jump in and look at the new UI. Uh, and I say new UI because they did update it again. So this is even better than when it was in beta 2. Uh, they've just kind of polished and cleaned it up. I think after some thought and feedback, they just kind of gave this a cleaner look. Uh, disks in use, you can click on each one. It tells you the drive temperature and information on there, uh, what the drive is the serial number of the drive. So this is just kind of nice. Then we have a little reports button under each one, a check for updates button here, bandwidth. So it's kind of, you know, nice dashboard, uh, looks good. And it is still responsive. So if you wanted to view this on your phone, uh, you can, it does work. So that's, I never thought to view this on the phone, but I, apparently there's a lot of users that do. And this is kind of cool, I guess, if you're on your network and you're like, I want to change a setting and I don't feel like getting out my uh, laptop or desktop and logging in, I want to do it on my phone, you can. So they've definitely kept up with the compatibility for the responsive design. I do like the way the menus collapse and things like that. And it helps with that clean interface of keeping everything on the side here. Now, the CPU temperature seems to be working. Everything's just kind of a simple bar graph. The bandwidth right here lets you jump right to the edit interface, check for that. Uh, and then we have the reports. Now, no matter what, where you click on reports, it doesn't land you on the corresponding one here. It just brings you to the reports dashboard. Maybe they'll fix that. And you have to get the mouse over here to scroll because if you have it here, it does this, which is not a bad thing. Let's you zoom into a section or zoom out. So if you want to zoom in and out for any of the reports, that's kind of novel. Disk information network information for each network interface. A little pull down for items for page so if you have a lot of network cards or a lot of hard drives. I, the common easy to navigate system is it's not bad the way the reports layouts are. It's pretty easy to do. I'm still a big fan and it's of course is still integrated is the net data. This is way better in terms of detail. I like that they have reports built in but the net data reports are substantially better and it's a great tool. Like I guess I'm very happy this is integrated in here. Now, let's jump back over to the interface. Something interesting that I noticed is the way they did the services page. I'm not the biggest fan of this large block, uh, and it's easy enough to put it to slim or in a table, but it's kind of neat when it is on large block now because they started adding graphics. I don't know if each one's going to get its own graphics, but here's rsync, NFS, the uh, S3 smart status. They should put a picture of hard drive there. The UPS, I'm, I don't know. That's kind of 
kind of remind me of like a uh, 90s, <laughs> the Solo Cup style design or something, SSH. So kind of cool that they did this. It does look pretty neat. Um, but I prefer the table design here. Start on boots, just a checkbox. Um, and then if it has further options, you can go there to configure each one. And in a case of net data where there's no options and it doesn't remember to view each time, uh, click here, launch, and it takes you right to the net data. Now, same thing when we're looking at the jails. There, uh, mount point shell, update, all this is works really well. So we can go into a jail, we can look at stuff, you can uh, easily get to the menus. I think it's a nice clean, it works really fast. I haven't really had any issues. This is one side note I will, and I'm sure they know about it, but we see eFault plug should not be running when adding a mount point, more info. It kind of gives a weird fault. All this is telling you if you want to add the mount points for storage that you should stop the jail. And it kind of sits here and spins. You can just refresh the page and it works. It doesn't break anything. It doesn't stop the jail from running. Close, go back to jails and it works fine. So it kind of gets stuck right there. But like I said, beta, I'm sure that's something will be fixed by the time it gets in production. Now, when you look at it from the installed plugins, that's where you're gonna go here. Uh, and in the case of Plex, it doesn't seem to have the version number available and same thing it does. And like I said, this was noted at the beginning and you can just go here to management and it launches the management page for these services. So it can launch right here for the Plex, which is nice. So that didn't seem to have any issues at all. Uh, I've rebooted, like I said, several times that these services came right back up running perfectly fine. Uh, the sharing and all that's working. I've tested it. I have not tested um, iSCSI on this particular one. It is set up still. Uh, someone had noted, and I don't know if this is fixed yet, is apparently some of the passwords on the iSCSI weren't working. I seen someone note that I have not confirmed that, uh, but the iSCSI seems to be working on this one. I haven't done any extensive testing other than it connects um, and seems to work. So there's not, that still is working. Windows SMB, I've not tested Apple and I have not done any NFS, uh, NFS shares on this. I generally don't do anything over NFS anymore. Uh, most everything we do is either iSCSI or Windows SMB sharing. But I will note this, and this goes for both updating to U6 and with the latest beta. Um, people said they couldn't get some things to connect and I've got a few people that messaged me about it. I've seen people talk about this. I didn't experience this problem. We're on U6 with our system and we're on beta three here, both connect, but I went ahead and spun up a Windows XP VM and it does not see it at all. Uh, it will not connect to it. My guess, and I don't remember what version of SMB that is built into Windows XP, but I know it's an old version, probably is why it doesn't work. So apparently some older devices using old NTLM uh, do have problems. That's an insecure protocol. They have disabled like NTLM V1 is off by default. So because they've updated to a newer, newer version of SMBD, the Samba server, they just got rid of some of the compatibility for that really old stuff. That's where some, there's a few bugs in there that if you absolutely need it, I guess you could turn this back on. I haven't done any testing, but I don't really have any use case for old NTLM, NTLM version one authorizations. So I've left it at the default and up to the security on this. Um, so if you're having trouble, this is where you want to start the troubleshooting. If you go, man, my old XP machines won't connect to my new free NAS box. This is probably related to why, both on the beta and on the U6. Now, one last thing in here, I have not done a ton of virtual machine testing. I'm gonna wait till this goes all the way to release Canada before I dig deeper into the virtual machines. I didn't find them wonderful on 11.1. .1. I find them a little bit buggy. And I've had some other people kind of say the same things that they're just not quite ready for prime time. Uh, the virtual machines are more crash resistant apparently in beta three. I will admit, and I ran the Ubuntu installer here, and this is the uh, system here. When I moved to U3, this one that wasn't booting properly seemed to start booting properly and going into the installer without the error messages I had before. So they're working on it. I'm going to do some testing with it maybe in the beta three, but I'm probably going to wait till release Canada before I spend any time on it. Um, I just feel though it's an add-on feature. I know they're working hard at it. I'm not trying to disparage developers at all. I just didn't feel like it's ready for prime time and I don't have any real use case other than 
loading a quick demo VM. But by the time this comes out, I'm hoping they have it stable enough because one of the things we'd love to build is a nice unified system inside of here for the MVR. That way we can build an MVR with FreeNAS, but have it in a Linux VM uh, to make it much easier to manage. Because I know there's ways to manage it in the jails. I want to try that in a jail and I want to try it in here and see how well it runs. But obviously having free NAS for the back end storage would be the ideal way to uh, build some of these. And I'm pretty excited to get that build going once this goes at least into release candidate. Maybe we'll build one for our own office here uh, and do some testing with it and see how fault tolerant it is. Uh, and that's always, the, that's always the goal of this is make sure that none of this crashes uh, a lot and comes back from the crashes. But other than that, it's, they keep improving. Um, I'm still happy with it. I'm not ready to move our production machine over to running uh, the FreeNAS Beta 3, but I'm debating. I may move my machine at home, which currently just runs a bunch of VMs, over to a FreeNAS box because mostly at home I just run it for Plex for you know watching some shows and things like that. So it might be worth worth a try uh, so I can actually put some more real-world use to it, uh, more than our testing that we're doing in the lab here. But Definitely so far, no major issues. The update went smooth as silk. Uh, warning if you have those dual boot devices set up, you have a mirrored boot device, there's apparently a problem with that. But other than that, I'm going to give it a thumbs up and look forward to, you know, the release candidate coming out here soon. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.